So we've been podcasting for about five years now. We've released over 250 episodes, and over all the years, we're always asked to do remote recordings. We've yet to find any type of solution that works for us because you can't control the audio, the video, and obviously sometimes the Wi-Fi isn't good. And so we just found this new tool. It's called Riverside. One thing I love about Riverside is how it records your conversation locally. It makes my producer's life a lot easier. This means even if your internet connection acts up during the pod, you'll still get a clean video without any lag or pixelation. Riverside also has a built-in clip generator that makes creating social media clips super easy. And so for you guys posting a lot of your content on TikTok or Instagram, you can do that right now through Riverside. And before using Riverside, we'd spend so many hours generating clips of our own. We had to hire an editor and a tremendous amount of work, time, money, and now we can just do everything in one spot. Riverside has made a tremendous amount of difference for us in our podcast. We finally have something we can believe in. If you're looking to try it, head over to riverside.fm, use promo code startup to storefront. That'll give you 15% off. And now, on to the episode. All right. Welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Marcy, author of From Chaos to Clarity. Thanks for joining. For people who don't know, tell us a little bit about the book, and, and then we can get into what led you there. But what's the book about? The book is a memoir self-help book. So I quit drinking about eight and a half years ago, and life completely started changing for me. So once life became abundant and full of happiness, which I did not have in my life prior to healing, I wanted to share my story because the hardships I, I went through I know so many people can relate to. And with that, I coped with alcohol. There was a lot of sexual abuse, mental abuse, and such abandonment with my, my family. And so I coped with alcohol. My mother was an alcoholic. And so I just wanted to share that story. But the real meat of the story is the recovery aspect and the life that I live today and all of the mindset changes that I learned and how I cope in such a positive way now. And I just want to share the story because recovery is hard. Addiction is hard. And so if you can touch someone out there, no matter where they are in their healing journey, and help them through that. Hold their hand, give them action items, let them know they're not alone. And then also break generational cycles. I mean, this was a big part of it for me. That is the gift that I am trying to give through my book, because we are all meant to live a joyous, abundant life. And I want to help others to know that it's possible and how to do it. I love that. Well, thank you for doing that. Thank you for being brave enough to obviously venture into a world of writing a book and, and sharing yeah. your story. Let's do this. I mean, for people listening, even for myself, right? This is almost a therapy session now, which is why I'm so thankful <laughs> I have the podcast because I can get educated and enlightened by people like yourself. At what point did you maybe realize, you know, there was some sort of alcohol abuse? And, I, and I'm asking this question in, in, in the sense of, I think during COVID, a lot of us, I can speak to myself. Yeah. All of a sudden, I was making cocktails, and I was a mixologist, and I was a wine professional. And all that was a lot of fun at the time. And I think we were all societally distracting ourselves by learning these new skills. But at the same time, it became an issue where I think once COVID sort of ended, I, I realized, oh, we, we, we used to do one bottle of wine or half a bottle of wine a night, and now we're doing two bottles pretty easily. And while it feels, it, it felt fun, and it certainly didn't feel unhealthy, at some point, I started to realize it certainly is unhealthy no matter how you slice it, like it is objectively not the right move. And so at what point maybe in your journey, did you realize like, oh, this is a problem. And then you, maybe you started to look back and go, this is a problem that's been in my family too. Well, Diego, most of my life, I questioned myself and my drinking because it was a real roller coaster ride for me, meaning that if I had difficult times in my life, my drinking would become heavier, but drinking every day was the norm. So it would just got to the point of how much I was drinking. And I would always look to others to see, is what I'm doing normal? Because my mother was an alcoholic. I mean, she drank all the time. It's what I saw. And so I didn't really know what normal was. 
I just knew that, okay, I went through periods of time where I was partying, I was young, I was blackout drunk and making really bad decisions. But then as I got older, I started becoming successful in my career. I actually got married and started a family. While I was still drinking, I was still questioning myself. Like I always felt uneasy about my drinking. But then towards, I got in front of the camera when I was early 40s and I started using alcohol as liquid courage because all of my self-esteem issues started bubbling up. All of the issues from my past started coming up for me. I mean, I'm playing these parts that I'm, I'm going to these dark places And I started having trouble in my marriage. And I just noticed that the drink was beginning to become more important to me than the things that were important, that truly were important to me. And so towards the very end, I was actually drinking privately, meaning like there were times I would hide what I was drinking because I didn't want to be judged by my husband. I didn't want to get in trouble for my drinking. And the final straw for me, even though I had, because when you have a drinking problem, it's a long journey until you decide, like, I can't do this anymore. I am destroying my life. I mean, I would wake up almost every night. How can I stop doing what I'm doing every day, telling myself, I'm not going to do it again, but you do. And so the final straw for me, while my life was crumbling, and I'm very open with my story because I believe that being open is healing for yourself. And the only way that you can truly touch someone else and help them to heal. So my final day of drinking, I'd gone on a modeling gig. I drank And then I continued to drink and I ended up getting a DUI. And when I went to bed that evening, I still felt the victim because I always had this victim mentality that everything was being done to me. But when I woke up that next morning, it was like truly for me, God, my higher power stepped in and said, you got to surrender. You need help. Like, and I finally listened And I went downstairs and I told my husband, he could have left me in that moment or he could have embraced me. And he ended up embracing me when I, when I said that I'm an alcoholic and I need help. And it was the first time in my life that I felt true love because I'd always been looking for love, but because of my sexual abuse and such, that was so skewed for me. I didn't know what that really meant or looked like or how to love or how to receive love. And it was in that moment that I felt love and I knew that I was all in and I wasn't going to look back and I did everything possible and I started in 12-step program. So that's how it was for me. That's incredible. I mean, Mm -hmm. I can imagine that just the turmoil of going through that. And I, I think we can all speak to that in some way, whether it's personally or just our relationships that we have. I know I can speak to my relationships I've had with some people and there's always this, uh, It's interesting when you see someone going through it because it's almost like you want to help them, but in helping them, they feel like you're trying to control them (laughs) or control their happiness. And and you're just like, no, like we're just trying to help. And oh man, that's toxic in a lot of different ways because you can take it very personally, even though you're trying to do the best by somebody. And the good thing is, is he was always like, I want you to get healthy because you can't, if you full on tell someone you've got a drinking problem, you're an alcoholic all walls are going to go up. Absolutely. That's right. Were you going to therapy at the time too, or did you start that maybe later? Oh, Diego, I've had a lifetime of therapy. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So that coupled with the 12-step program, I evolved in such a way and healed in such a way that I almost wish everyone could go through it because it's truly, if you really work those steps and it's faith-based and you start to become emotionally intelligent. You see your your part in things. You have empathy then for others. You begin to live in a, a mindset of gratitude instead of 
all of these negative things. Life is always against me. Uh, you start to see the positives and even the worst case that, you know, situations, solution based forgiveness. There's just so much you get from it. What was the hardest part at this point of your journey? You know, you get the DUI, you have this sort of moment where you're reflecting now, but did you go cold turkey or was there a yeah, struggle? Yeah, I did. You did? I did. Okay. So something clicked. It did. I mean, I, I certainly had to use all of the tools that I was learning in AA. It's not easy, but I just knew. I knew that I was done and I wanted so badly to live a different life, a life where I wasn't struggling and lying and hurting myself and others around me. And I became very spiritual and I became a person that I led with my heart, giving to others is, I've always been someone that is giving, but it's different once you clear your mind and your soul and your your body of this toxic liquid you're putting in you, whatever it is, right? Whether it's food or drugs or whatever you're you're struggling with. This is a way that you are masking something else, something deeper. And so when I started to be able to have clarity, started to be able to think clearer and have more purpose in my life, to really understand my path, it was clearly an evolution and continues to be an evolution, but one I'm so grateful that I have been able to to go through yeah. and continue to grow with. I'll be vulnerable here for a minute with you. I think from my perspective, so I'm, I'm in the middle of a divorce, and as we're as mm -hmm. I think about the, my relationship from the beginning, it's so interesting. And so the moment we decided to sort of separate. It was almost like we found ourselves again, you know, and and so when we first got together, I was big on a couple of tenets of our relationship. And so the, the two were always clarity. So it's interesting that you mentioned that. And so being really clear on the things that we want in life at a high level and working to, to those things. And then the second thing, the second tenant, which is something I, you know, I believe in strongly, which is infinite scale. And so the example is like, here you are, you're writing a book and you bring it to me and I'm your partner. And my job is just to just to see how big we can take it. Like, can we get to Oprah? Like making sure you feel like you're the most supported human being on whatever it is that you're bringing in a professional setting, in a personal setting. And so infinite scale and clarity were the two things that were really amazing. After, you know, as we're going through this very amicable separation, like I just stopped drinking. And after like, yeah. And after a week's time, I, you know, she was traveling. And so after a week time, she came back home and we were talking about it. And I was like, you know, I think, I think we were like numbing ourselves. Like we did a really good job. This sounds, it sounds odd to say this, right? And maybe some things are resonating for you in your book. But to me, I was telling her, I'm like, we did a really good job numbing ourselves and like having fun and not confronting any of the hard things that, not even hard, like we didn't have kids. So, you know, it wasn't that complicated, but I mean, like we weren't, chasing the two things around clarity and infinite scale that we used to be so amazing at. And somehow in the divorce, it was like all of that lifted and it became amazing in some way. You know, it was like, oh, wow, I remember what I remember the foundation that we laid here and it just got muddled. Yeah, we can we can certainly get lost on our path. And it takes something jarring in our lives sometimes for us to reset to find ourselves. And the thing for me is that if you would have asked me what my passions were or what's important to me, I wouldn't have known what to say because I never was connected to Marcy and I never really got to know myself because I lost that girl so long ago. And then it became- Through the abuse, you mean? Through the abuse. Yeah. And so it became about numbing myself and then projecting onto other people, looking for other people, relationships, whatever it was, to validate me, to fill my cup, to literally, like, I, I, it was a distraction. I would, like, be trying to help and manage something with somebody else while all the while I was just forgetting about me. 
because it was too hard to face me. But it was once I was able to go inside and and turn that lens in inward and begin to love myself because I had lost that so long ago, I begin to to understand who I really am, right? I didn't have to lose myself in someone else. So now my relationship with my husband is is beautiful because I stand on my own two feet. I know my passion. I know what's important to me. And I stand for that. And we've been able to grow together in the things that are important to us individually and together. That must be the hardest part. I think the part Mm -hmm. of of sort of what you mentioned before, which is you recognize you've been numbing yourself and now you have to confront yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, that's the hardest part. I mean, I've Ooh, seen that in hard. real time. It is. That's a, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people that stop drinking or, or stop, stop numbing themselves in any way. The hardest thing to do is go inside and start healing that broken part of you. And facing the pain, it's hard. Like, I've been talking about this. I talk through my my talk show, Wake Up With Marcy. I talk through my book, you know, any kind of public speaking. But it's still, it's still raw, even though there's so many years of me doing my healing. But it doesn't define me anymore. It's something that happened to me. And that's, that's the thing. You got to just start changing the way that you look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Changing the narrative for yourself and having Mm -hmm. an appreciation because there are still gifts there, even though, I mean, for all of us, no matter what hardships we've all gone through, which life will definitely throw them at you, but there's, there's gifts to be gained. There truly are. I mean, just in anything, right? Uh, Any difficulties that we go through, any failures, it's like, what are we gaining? It may take a long time to see it, but there is something positive that can come from that. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I lost my father when I was really young. And when I talk to, I have a, a therapist who who's almost like a philosopher in some way. And so we really bond around philosophy, which is amazing. But essentially what he told me was like, he's like, look, you were born into the abyss. You know, you lost your father so young. And so you, you're really good at act. It's like your, your superpower is actually going into the unknown and figuring it out. And so it's no surprise in business. That's exactly what I do. You know, everything I've ever done is like some crazy, you know, and I mentioned the sports bar project like that, that, that just was a crazy idea we had. And now venturing into that world of uh, things I know nothing about, essentially, I'm very comfortable in that. And so in that, I found my superpower, right? It was like, and hearing it from a therapist or anybody, it really makes you think like, wow, there are gifts to be gained here. And in some cases they become your superpower. And it's also something like there's two sides of every coin also, but as long as you can acknowledge both, it's kind of freeing and amazing in that way. That's the thing, like surrendering, freeing yourself and finding your superpower. I mean, how incredible to be able to start living your life that way. It's actually really cool. I'll say that much. And so, you know, I think it's it's also strange, like as someone going through a divorce, it's it's like uh, people will really come up to me and like, are you okay? Is everything okay? And in some weird way, I'm like, things have never been better. And that's not me trying to put on this false sense of I'm okay. This is like a reality. But the wonderful thing is both of you, right? Because you're both totally. helping each other through this. 100%. And so there's care, there's love. And uh, I think for me, it was also like, it's ours, like it's ours. And so we decide whatever we want to do with this. And so it's almost like re, uh, claiming the problem, you know, making a fully accountable. It's your problem. And so we're going to do this chapter ends with how we want it to end type thing. Exactly. And one of the things that I've learned through my healing is like, we have no control of the outcome or how someone else is going to react we have the control of how we are going to react. And that is it. That is the only control we have. When it came to spirituality, how, how was this, how did you land there yeah. uh, through this process? Yeah. So my book is chaos to clarity, but it's seeing the signs and breaking the cycle. So as I started healing and opening up myself to faith and to God and to my angels, 
I started receiving the most incredible signs, like crazy things started happening to me that were guiding me towards these things like my show, like my book. And we're all guided, right? It's just being open to it. And so the first step for me, I was raised in church. I've always believed in God. My understanding of God is very different now. I did kind of have that idea of the big man in the sky and judging me and and all of those things. But now to me, God is an energetic force of love that we're all connected by this force of love. It's just where we choose to meet it. And so I just got to tell you a few stories. Yeah, so please do. The first was I gave up acting because I was like, that was basically my final demise, right? Like that was it that put me over the edge with my drinking. So I stopped acting, but there were a few little gigs that were presented to me and I, I took them on. And so there was one and it, it just didn't go great. And so I was in bed and it was the middle of the night and I'm thinking to myself, like, why am I doing this? Right. What, what are the benefits to me and my life? Right. The pros and the cons, I guess deal with my child and getting her coverage and I'm running late because this has gone on way too long. And there were some other personal things. So I ended up deciding in the middle of the night, I said, I'm calling my agent tomorrow and I am not going to do this anymore. I'm done. I'm not even going to pick up these little gigs. And Diego, I mean, this sounds insane, but all of a sudden I feel something in my bed. And so I I go to pick it up. I turn on the light. And it is literally my modeling card that I had not used in a year that I keep in my office downstairs. And it's in my bed. So I knew in that moment that, okay, I know I'm not supposed to stop. I know that there's something bigger and more that I'm supposed to do with this. I have no idea what it is, but I'm going to trust the process. And so I didn't give it up. I made some choices, um, some different choices as to what I was going to do in that area. And then another one, dragonflies are a huge part of my branding, my story. I live in Wyckoff, New Jersey. I, we were living in one house and I, I stopped drinking in that house. And that's where a lot of the chaos happened. And we're now in our new home that we moved into seven years ago. And I'm sitting outside and I, I have my, my feet in the pool. And all of a sudden I see this little dragonfly. And I look up and I am surrounded by hundreds of dragonflies. I'm like mind blown, right? And just such a sign that, wow, I'm in the right place. I'm doing the right thing. I just had such a feeling of peace. Never seen it again. But every time I see a dragonfly, I know that I'm protected and I'm being guided. And it's a, it's a, it's a sign of transformation. Yeah. So, and there it is. And you're wearing a necklace with a dragonfly and, also. Yeah, yeah. So my first year of sobriety, my husband gave me this necklace and I, I'm at eight and a half years. I wear it every day. What a keeper. <laughs> your husband's a very thoughtful man. That's amazing. He is. When you talk to people, you know, during your speeches or, or any seminars at all, and you're telling the story, what are people saying? Like, what's the interaction? Are they like, oh my God, I need, I need this. Are they scared? Are they terrified to in some way like, because it, it's the reality is you had to make a step in order for those things to happen, right? And so you decide, you reclaim your ability, and then the world sort of responds to you. But people sometimes just get stuck in like, will the world respond without taking the step? How are people reacting in real time when you're telling these stories on your different platforms? Well, I'll say the first thing is, is that I'm always being told how inspiring it is that I'm so open with my story and how how helpful that is. Because at the end of the day, I tell my story because I want to share hope. And then through my story, 
I generally will end up touching someone in some way. Maybe it's something they haven't even recognized in a long time. Maybe it's a story that they they've pushed down so deep and they haven't shared with somebody. But I always tell them when they because they share with me that you have started your healing journey. You have let that out. And each time you tell your story, you will become stronger and stronger. And then through the story, I like to give ways that I have learned to help myself. And the first and foremost, biggest part of this is finding your way to gratitude. And there's there's steps to do this. And one step that you can take to help yourself in, in moving in that direction is every day you wake up and you find three things you're grateful for. I don't care where you are. You may not be living in the house you want or the car you want to drive, but what do you have? You have a bed, you have sheets, you have food, you have running water. There, you know, you have your arms, your legs, your sight, whatever it may be, right? But these are things you can find to be grateful for. And you can start small. And as you continue to grow in the gratitude, your life truly starts to change. I mean, you are attracting what you put out there. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned. Yeah. Do you think it's a skill? Like, do you think when you think about it? So, and I think about this podcast in some way, not to go full business here, because I like the space we're in, but in the business world, these are, I think, tools and skills that people can learn. There's something to be said about them. Like your business is never where you want it to be. That's always the case. I've never met an entrepreneur that's been like, I did it. I've never, that's that just, that person doesn't exist. But there is a sense of like, I'm building, I'm here. These are, the, if I look back two years ago, I'm clearly in a better place today. And so therefore there are things to be grateful for. And I think honing these things as skills is so important. You know, like I see myself doing it all the time where I'm just like, every day, I do exactly what you're saying. I'm thankful that I have a coffee machine so that I can make coffee and it's part of my ritual. It, it's as silly as that. But that's a huge thing, <laughs> but it's right? Amazing. You guys want their first cup of coffee in the morning, totally. right? And so it can be as simple as that. You know, I hope people listening, it can be as simple as the fact that you go downstairs and or upstairs, wherever it is, and you're able to just brew a, a nice coffee. And can you have sugar and cream in it if you want to, Ex right? Yeah. So Treat yourself, yeah. Exactly. There's three right there that there's you can three. be grateful for. <laughs> that's right. And that's But right. it is, I will say that, you can listen to the greatest leaders out there in no matter what field it is. But if you don't take action, nothing will change. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes it's the action you need to take that people are always, you know, afraid the hardest to take. Part. It's the hardest part. Yeah. It's the abyss. It goes back to the abyss. You know, I, I'm learning a lot in life at the moment, but I think the way I've deconstructed it is I think, I think life is preparing you to be the guru. And I think a lot of us spend so much time fighting that. Mm -hmm. And in a number of ways where life can happen to you, right? A lot of people will take the approach of life is happening to me. And then we all numb ourselves with any agent we want, because that's the world we live in today. And what life really wants you to do is take the reins. And it's trying to prepare you for, to be the guru. And that's incredibly uncomfortable because that means the buck stops with you. But I think once we all take accountability of that, Life, to your point, it's a, it all opens up to you. Yeah, it all opens up. I mean, I know that people so often will look at my life, you know, and they'll say, you have the perfect life for X, Y, and Z reasons, right? But I've built my life and there's been so much that I've put into to the work and these gifts are coming in return because of that. And life is not a gift every day. you know. Well, it is a gift every day. I'll take that back. Life is a gift every day, right? Every day we wake up is a gift and new opportunities. But things go wrong. Things go wrong in life all the time. But how are you approaching it? That's the difference. And if we stay stuck in the anger and the grief and we don't enable ourselves or give us ourselves permission to forgive first ourselves and others, 
That's a huge one. If you are stuck and you think life is happening to you, please look up victim mentality because that was a big place that I stayed. And that was a reason that I had so many difficulties in my relationships. I mean, we have patterns, bad habits in our lives. And if the same things keep happening over and over, it's time to look at yourself. And I know for myself that I do the work. I wake up every morning and I do the work. And, you know, meditation is huge. I don't know if you do your meditation, Diego, but that's helped me so much in focus and clarity and healing and allowing my next step in life to come to me, right? Like our, our intuition, our higher selves to, to guide us on our paths. I've been doing all these crazy things. I started cold plunging. That for yes. me is like a game changer. People will yeah. ask me, oh, why do you do it? And they all they think I'm going to give them health benefits. And what I tell them is there's something really amazing about you choosing torture to start your day or end your day or your middle of your day because all of a sudden the rest of your day feels pretty amazing. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like I don't do it for any – I like all the other benefits. I play a lot of tennis, so I for sure you know, get the whole inflammation reduction. But for me, it's really as simple as I do a lot of hard stuff. And somehow choosing the cold plunge makes everything easy. And that's when it. I do it in the, <laughs> in the shower now, right? Yeah, if, yeah, totally. But there's totally. something about standing there, controlling your <laughs> breath, right? Because it is about controlling your breath and how you get through it. It's, it's a, just another way of learning, I believe, to, to control your mind, your nervous system, your breath, your reaction to something. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Like, yeah, no, I think you're spot on. Totally. Right? Like, I can, I can do this. I can do this. And if I can do this, I can do anything. Yeah. The meditation has been a little tough for me, but I've, I've been working on it a lot because I just it's know there's, it's so amazing and the benefits are incredible. And I think there's going to be a lot of published benefits coming soon also, a lot more as it relates to just like overall happiness. And I think it actually has a way of transforming your brain. Oh, this is early days, but this is what I'm being told. But I'm working on it. I'm working. I bought this thing. We interviewed the CEO of Hyperice and they have a tool. It's called, I think it's called Core. It's this tool that basically you hold and it gives you like uh, vibrations through your hands to con that you're supposed to match with your breathing. And so in that, for someone like me, the distraction of you, me holding something that vibrates and I have to mimic my breathing to the vibration is like ideal. All of a sudden I can lock in for 12, 15, 20 minutes because uh, there's the immediate feedback. And so it's great. And it's, it's all audio too. And so you hear like, you know, there's, it's guided meditation. Yeah. I like the guided meditation. I think that's really good. I think the other thing is, I mean, you can do meditation when you're walking in nature, like taking yourself into nature. You don't have to like, don't put in an ear, but your earbuds. And while I love podcasts and I love music and all of that, maybe take that time just to kind of listen to yourself. Right. Or, and you don't have to do it long periods of time. I mean, this is something you build on. I think people get so overwhelmed. I can't sit there for 10, 15 minutes and not do anything right. Do it for two minutes. Do it for four or five minutes. I mean, I do guided so often because that's what works for me. When it came to, I guess, starting the story and you wanting to put yourself out there in such a public way, what was the thing that was so difficult? I, you know, everyone's got that stigma thing and I get it. Society is not kind. <laughs> but what was that like for you? So it was scary. I'm not going to lie. And I started a social media talk show called Coffee with Marcy in the very beginning. And that's what kind of started putting me out in my community. And I was interviewing entrepreneurs and nonprofits and such. And after doing that for about a year, that's when I began to, to heal so much. I was still keeping it quiet, my story. I wasn't sharing that. But once I launched Wake Up seven years ago, it was at that time that I had to get real with myself and start sharing with others and not be afraid of being judged because my show was about sharing stories of transformation. So I am where I am because of my transformation. And how am I supposed to share my story or share other stories without sharing my story? And that's when I became 
more open with my story and I didn't care as much. I mean, yeah, there was a part of me that was fearful. What are people going to think about me? I'm out in the community or what are people going to say? But as I began to grow and they saw that my message was truly about helping others and they saw how much I was helping, I think that that softened, right? My fear of it and and the people judging me. I think now also with, with mental health and mindfulness and addiction and COVID and all everything that's come out, we are breaking the stigma a bit. And, you know, just like us having this conversation right now, there was a time you would have never had this conversation and be so open about it. But I feel like in today's society and our young people, what a gift to be able to say, it's okay to talk about your feelings, your emotions, your needs, and your story. Because this is a trickle-down effect, in my opinion. And I, I really hope that while I do want to help people that are my age or older, or 35 plus, I'll say, I really would love to touch younger people so they don't have to suffer for so long. Maybe they'll grasp it before, you know, like that green light when, when you've, you've almost destroyed life. I do like that perspective a lot. You're totally spot on. Yeah, it is a, it's a different day. You can literally just follow TikTok accounts about mental health, and that's a, new, that's a new thing. Yeah, you're totally right. The access, the resources are there. Not everyone can afford a therapist, and in some cases you can, you know, you can get it for free on YouTube or other avenues. There's yeah. free therapy out there now. And 12-step from COVID, these are the silver linings, right, the good things. AA is online now. If you're too uncomfortable to go to a meeting or try it out, Go on a 12-step meeting online and you, you don't turn your camera on. You don't have to until you're ready. What has it been like? So just going from sharing your story to then developing the different skills in terms of just getting a book out there. You know, what have you learned along just being the, the business side of, of this entire operation, which is different, right? Uh, what has that been yeah. like for you? Yeah. So, well, there's definitely a business side to this, right? Like, when I launched my show, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, even though I have a TV show. I'm an entrepreneur, be, you know, with my book. And the thing is, is that, yes, my background was in television. And I was able to harness all that I had learned to create this show. But I'd never been a talk show host. I didn't know that much about social media and marketing and all of those things. But what I did do is make a decision that this is what I'm doing and I will do what it takes to learn to do this. And I started just teaching myself and trusting myself and not letting the fear hold me back like it used to. And a big part of letting go of the fear was letting go of perfectionism because I'm not Nobody is. I used to try to be perfect all the time because honestly, if, if I was perfect on the outside and never made mistakes, and then no one would, I felt like no one would see the plethora of imperfections on the inside. But today, just acknowledging that I'm not perfect, I'm going to make mistakes has allowed me to move through that fear and keep going. Like you got to keep going and don't give up too soon. And that's, again, like these mindset changes that I've been able to gift myself, I'm able to put into my work now. And if I have a crappy day, I sit with that, I allow myself the emotions, and then I get up the next day and say, what am I going to do different today? What do I need to learn? I'm going to ask help. Surround yourself with the people you're not the best at. And that's okay. We can't be great at everything. It is the best when you're the worst or the dumbest in the room. That's a good That's a good room to be. I always say that. On the tennis court, if I'm the worst player, I'm the one improving the fastest. And so, yeah. so there's benefits to these things. Yeah. Exactly. And I just, my life has always put me in sink or swim situations. So I've learned how to swim. But 
again, with the mindset and the action and tools that I put into place every day, I'm not half drowning anymore. I will say this: some of the most successful friends that I have have all been through this, the twelve step program, mm-hmm. and there's just something about it. I don't, I, I can't speak to it because I've never gone through the program, but I, it's really amazing the way that these people have transformed themselves and applied the principles directly to business, and it's just mm-hmm. been the most. I mean, life change, like literally life goes to life black change. and white, totally yeah. different. Yeah. It's, it's been, I mean, it's amazing, amazing. And so I think, you know, my takeaway is always maybe I should just go through the process of learning the steps so that like any help is good help. Right. And so let's see what else it can do. Through these steps, right. Acknowledging you have a problem, turning yourself over to your higher power, recognizing who's harmed you, speaking that out to somebody you trust then acknowledging your part, seeing your role in these things are so important. And then forgiving others, making amends with people, starting to give of yourself, work outside of yourself, share the message. Like there's, that's not a bad way to live. The one thing I, you know, going through my divorce, I remember I would meet people and I would tell and, uh, they would all say like, Diego, you live, let's like perfect life. Like everything you do in business, you achieve, you know, your business, I thought your wife and you were like the the power couple, you know, and I'm just like, I appreciate the sentiment. I mean, that's a really beautiful thing to say, but I can tell you, despite how you might feel at this moment, or even right now, you're saying, I thought you lived this perfect life. I can tell you like, all you're really seeing is a moment of, of new direction. And to me, like I'm closer to that perfect life going through the thing that you're saying is bad. You see what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I'm closer to that life today. Yes. Yeah. And your perception of it is, I thought you lived this perfect life. Right. And you're and the, re- it and the reality is I'm getting closer to it. Right. It's interesting. You yeah. know, people's perception and, and sort of the projections that they put onto you which is beautiful. I mean, all that, like that whole interaction was really beautiful because in some way they felt better. And to me, it was like, just wait, like I'm in the, you're just watching an inflection point, but I think everyone's life, uh, hers included is going to be significantly better. I just truly hope that people know that they're all worthy to live in, in a place of joy and happiness and purpose. Everyone's life looks different, right? Just to to find what works for you to bring yourself happiness and not, not comparing yourself to others, right? Because we all have our own path. We are created. We all have our own path in this life. And the, the beauty that I have found is actually finding that through the clarity that I have found through my recovery. For me, I think the reason I like like this podcast or entrepreneurship is you hear everyone's path and there's a beauty to that. But to me, it's also like, I'm just so thankful because in some way being an entrepreneur and putting yourself out there in the world, you have to acquire the skills and the tools associated with all the things just to put yourself out there. And then you got to acquire business tools and skills just to give yourself a chance. <laughs> and then, and all of these things, I think, prepare you for for the what life's really about, right? Whether it's parenting or whether it's building a family or leaving legacy, you know, those are, that's why I love entrepreneurship. It's because it's the, to me, it's, it's where it all happens. It's, it's, it's where you find who you are and those things then can transpire into more meaningful life, you know, real life things, but it's the arena. It's the arena where you, you, you develop. I do love that I today can be living my dream and also be a great mom. Yeah. What is this like? Uh, and we can wrap on this and then obviously yeah. we, I want to tell people where they can get the book, but um, what has it been like? How have you seen yourself as a, as a mother change or shift or mm. what has that been like? I, I mean, I've done a 180 as the love has always been there and knowing that I never wanted to be like my mom and the kids, my kids were everything to me. But today I'm able to be a confidant, a teacher, someone they can trust. And my kids know that I am the safe place to land today. And no matter what is going on with them, 
I'm not going to judge them or get mad at them. And I want them to know, and they do know, they can come to me and talk to me openly about anything. And they don't have to live in fear about that. And I hope that I am giving them the ability to see that whatever they desire in this life is possible for them too. I love that. Yeah. You're the example. Well, thank you. Where can people get the book? Where can people find you, support you, watch your show, obviously, and, and get thank the book? Thank you. Yeah. So my book you can find on amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. I'm actually on, on Fifth Avenue at the Barnes and Noble. I have a couple of signed ones there in New York City. Target.com, Walmart.com. And my show, Wake Up with Marcy, airs in the tri state area on WLNY TV, Hulu Live, YouTube TV. And then I also have a YouTube channel, Wake Up with Marcy, and Instagram. I love to, to share inspiration on Instagram and such. So just put in Marcy Hopkins or Wake Up with Marcy and you'll find me. Marcy, thanks so much for being vulnerable. Thanks for writing your book. Thanks for giving the world a piece of your story. Thank you. And I appreciate you putting yourself out there to help so many. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.